Okay then. Uh, so a very good afternoon. Uh, sorry, a very good morning to everyone. <clears throat> so today we are into the day three session. And uh, so whoever are new today to the day three session, just I'll give a small intro. So first of all, I would like to welcome you all to the Logic Labs Technologies. So we are into the batch of Linux administration. That is RHCSA, that is Red Hat Certified System Administrator. Uh, my name is Sonika and I'll be your trainer. I am RCSA and I'm CE Certified Engineer. And also I'm working as a system Linux system administrator in one of the organization. Our batch number is two to four. Uh, and the <clears throat> timing of our uh, batches will be from uh, morning 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Each session will be of one hour in the weekdays, okay? From Monday to Friday, it will be from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. The duration will be of four weeks. And the course fees is 399 INR. You can scan for here over here <clears throat> for the course content. And even I'll be sharing you into the chat box to the related links. To get registered with the course, course you can scan over here also, or else the link will be provided to you into the chat box. So as per general information, if you have any queries, related to our batch, related to the timings, or any of the queries, you can just contact Logic Labs Technologies. Uh, the contact numbers are provided over here. You can take a screenshot or you can note it down. And also the mail ID is provided that is support at that logiclabstech.com. Okay, so first of all, just uh, look into this, that the first three sessions, as we had day one, yesterday was the day two, and today is a day three session. These all three sessions are free to all the attendees. Okay. And the fourth means from tomorrow. Uh, whoever are the paid participants, means who will, whoever will get registered with our, uh, with our uh, course will get the Zoom meeting link the Zoom meeting link to their registered mail ID. Okay, so once you are paid to our course, you will have your own login ID and password, which will be provided by Logic Labs, and you will be having your own dashboard. On that dashboard, you will have all the session recordings and notes for the lifetime. There is no any validity like three months, six months you need to complete. No, for the lifetime, you will be having the session recordings access and the notes recording access through the LMS graphy. Okay, so you can access <clears throat> those session recordings and notes to your dashboard. So whenever you need to recall. And it would be a very good thing if you'll join the WhatsApp community of our so that you will be regularly updated with our batch details and whatever batch related informations are there will be updated into the WhatsApp community. So just give me two minutes. I'll get shared with all the links to you people. Uh, so yes, I'll keep it in a chat box. So whoever are new today. So the day one recording. Is there a class tomorrow? Marima. Um, it's Friday today, right? No, uh, it will be on Monday. Okay, Monday to Friday, five days a week from morning 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay, it, it's all clear to you all. So Monday, it will be continued. And remember one more thing, uh, that today is the day three session, as I mentioned. It, it is free and open to everyone. To get attended to the to get attend the classes, but uh, the one who are the one who wants to get joined on the fourth of the session and the rest of the sessions, they need to get paid to our courses. Okay, so the below are the things. Uh, on Monday is the last demo. 
Okay, so Monday one more we have given uh, the session to attendees. So it will be the day four session. Okay, so let me share the links to you people, whoever are new. This is the day one recording on the YouTube. Uh, next is the day two recording. So yes, this is the day two recording. And uh, <clears throat> the course content, whoever are newer for the day three sessions, just click on the links, you will go through the details and please attend the day one session where you will get cleared with what all contents we are going to provide and what all notes are get got provided and what all course contents we are going to cover into our RCSA syllabus. So this is the payment link. So all these things, links are provided to you people. So the day one recording, day two recordings, course content link, WhatsApp group link, you please join the WhatsApp group community which will help you to keep updated with the batches and the payment link to attend all the rest of the batches. So yes, this was all about the intros. So let's start with our day three session topic. So yesterday we completed So yesterday I told you how to install the virtual box. And after that, I told you how to set up a virtual system that is machine or else you can say computer, okay. And then after we downloaded the iOS and we downloaded the iOS and made an installation into Proceed. We gave the installation, installation summary to the virtual box and likewise it installed our OS. So hope everyone are ready with their operating systems. And also I told to create the AWS account uh, so that we can create an EC2 instance on the AWS where you can practice your uh, Linux operating system, okay? So, so once you are done with your iOS to be installed on your computer, you will get logged on. So see yesterday, which I created Linux RCSA batch 224. So let me start with this system. So see, it will ask you two modes, okay? So we need to enter to the first mode, that is 4.18. The kernel in a kernel version is given over there. The first one you need to get logged in. So hoping everyone have installed with their operating system. Yes, can you raise your hands who all have made their systems ready? Because today we'll starting with basics of the commands. Yes, the system is getting booted up. So root root and thread and two three. Yeah, the terminal. So yes, see, we have logged into our operating system successfully. 
I made the user login as root and logged in by its credentials. I gave a password which I assigned at the time of the installation as per yesterday's practicals we performed. So here we can successfully create some of the files. So to create a file, there's one command touch file one. Okay, I created one file. I'll create one directory. Just I'm showing the demo. These commands I'll be explaining to you in the basic commands. Okay, just there is there. I'm showing that we are into the Linux operating system. Okay, so see successfully we have created one file and also one directory into our new Linux operating system. So yes, that's it. So we have uh, we have completed our installation procedure into the virtual box. Now the second second thing we are going to see is it into the AWS instance. So yesterday, I, as I told you, just create an account onto the AWS and we'll just move to the AWS console now. AWS console login. So yes. To sign in, I have my own credentials where I'm going to log in. So once you create your account and log in, you will get this panel where you will get logged in. Okay, so recently visited, it is shown on my uh, panel because I have already worked on it. But when you need to search just into the search box, you have to search EC2. Okay, so see what EC2 means is virtual servers in the cloud. How virtually we have created our operating system onto the virtual box Oracle box. Likewise, samely we can install our or create our Linux servers onto the cloud platform. Okay. So once you click into the EC2, you will get to the EC2 dashboard, okay? So this is the EC2 dashboard means you will come to know that what are instances are running, the number of instances, the dedicated hosts or whatever. Just now, as of now, you should understand the instances which we are going to create. So yes, into the left-hand corner, you need to click to instances. Okay, so as of now, I don't have any of the instance which is leased over here. Okay, now we are going to launch a new EC2 instance. So the first thing you have to click is to click to launch instance into the right hand side. So yes, you come here with the launch and instance page. Amazon EC2 allows you to create the virtual machines or instances that run on the AWS cloud. Okay, quickly get started by following the simple steps. So see, name and the tag. So let me name it as Linux Server Batch. You can keep it as Batch. Linux batch two to four. Okay, so this is the name for my machine I'm giving. Here, see application and OS image. There is no need of giving an iOS from our end. By defaultly, Amazon will be having their own AMI. AMI means only iOS. Okay, in Amazon web sub, uh, Amazon uh, console, it will take it as Amazon machine image. That is, we are going to select a red hat. So it has get got selected, select red hat, where you are going to install into your EC2 instance. So by default, it will take it as, means a red hat is 
free tire eligible. Okay. Some are paid and some are free. So as of now, we are taking free only. Okay. There is no need to pay any of the charges to this. Okay. So we have selected our AMI as Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, 9 version. Okay. Architecture, keep it as 64-bit. T2.micro. This is also free trial eligible. What is this T2 type means? What it is going to take its hardware configuration. So see, it is showing one V CPU, one GB memory and likewise. So whatever it comes under free tire eligible, it will take into consideration. That is T2.micro. Key pair. Key pair is nothing but those are the login credentials to our EC2 instance. So once we install our operating system, there is a need to get connected to it right onto cloud. So to get connected to the cloud, we need to generate the key pair, means we need to generate the login credentials. So let me create a new key pair. So I'll we need to name that key pair. I'll keep it as Linux batch two to four. Under scroll key pair, you can keep it as so that you can remember. So this is the one which I'm creating, but n number we need to create. So the likewise, similar to those, the name to the server, we are assigning it as Linux batch two to four key pair. Keep it RSA only, encrypted, private, and public. And the PEM file. PEM is for O for use with open SSH. Means when, as I mentioned you, we need to get connected to the cloud EC2, right? So what is the way, the SSH port? That is secure shell host, right? So with the PEM only, we'll create a file. So create a key pair. So see, the file has got downloaded with PEM extension. Okay, so keep that file as it is. Let's move down. So network settings, in network settings, we have to assign the security group, okay? So here I need to create a security group, okay? So let me select, it is already selected, create a security group and go to the edits column. So once you come here, do not make any changes to other things, straight away come to the security group name, okay? So there I will keep the name as Linux badge two to four. And SG, SG means security group. The key pair, I named it with a key pair. The SG, that is a security group, I named it as the security group. The same thing you need to copy here and keep it into the description, okay? Don't make any changes to SSH because SSH is the port through which we are going to get connected to our EC2s onto the cloud platform. Okay, the only need is to, you need to create a security group, go to edits, add your, add the security group name and description will be the same. Okay, so next move. So configuration, configure storage. So right now as a, whatever they have given, keep it as 10 GB only because we are using the free tire of them. Okay, free tire eligible customers can get up to 30 GB of EBS general purpose or magnetic storage. Okay, but keep it 10 GB only. We are performing the practicals, right? So yes, this is all, all the summary we have given to the AWS that I need this type of instance. Okay, so see software image in the summary, you can say number of instances, one. Software image AMI, I have kept it image of Red Hat because I need Red Hat operating system on it. So next is the T2 micro virtual server type it has taken. Security group, we have assigned a new security group. Storage volumes, it has took off 10 GB and that's it. Yes, this is the summary of our instance. So we have given all important um, aspects from our end to create a new EC2 instance. So let me click on launch instance. So our instance is getting launched. Means we have successfully created our 
virtual machine and also the operating system installed on it. Okay, so let's come back with the instances. Yes, so this is here. It will show into your instances list. Now come back to the PEM file. So just show into folder, copy it, and come to your desktop, create a new folder. There we'll keep it as Linux batch db4. Copy your PEM, paste your PEM file over here. Okay. So PEM file is nothing but, as I told you, it is the credentials. But whenever we need to get connected to the EC2, Linux EC2, remember, for Windows EC2, you can uh, use the PEM file. For Linux EC2, there is a need to generate the PPK file. Okay. So for that, to convert from PEM to PPK file, we have one um, software called as Putigen. Okay. So what is Putigen? Let me tell you. It is nothing but it converts the PEM file to the PPK file. So for to get downloaded with the Putigen, just go to your browser. And here you need to search for Putigen. See, Putigen download. So you will come to the Putigen website. So there you need to click here. Just come down onto the page. Just a moment, the system has got slower. Ah, yes. So see, download Putigen on Windows. To go to Putti, go to the Putti installation download page. So let me go to the download page. So yes, we have came over here. So slowly scroll down. So see, MSI file is there. We don't want MSI, we need EXE files. Right, so putty exe, alternative binary for Windows. So this is putty, we need putty gen. So yes, so putty gen for RSA and DSA key generation utility. So it is of 64 bit. Just click over here onto puttygen.exe. And automatically, it will start uh, getting downloaded. So see, puttigen.exe has got downloaded. So just select show to folders. And from here, you can run your puttigen. So run. So see, what is putty? It is a key generator, right? So generate a public private key pair and to load an existing private key. So let me load. What to load? We have already created one key pair, right? With the extension of PEM, but we need it of PPK file. So let's select that file. I have create, kept it into the Linux batch to the folder. So see, it is not showing, but here if we select all files, it will be uh, so this is the PEM file. Open that PEM file. Successfully imported. Okay. So now you need to generate. Generate the key pair. So just randomness by moving. Generate some uh, randomness by moving the mouse over the blank area so that it will run. Okay. So it has given us the key. So save the public key. So keep the type to key generate as RSA only and save. So give the name as Linux batch two to four PPK. Okay, because this is a P this will be a PPK file. So save. So this was the work of Putigen. 
next so after this we have already so see we created our ppk file just a moment Okay. So start deleting this file, okay? So just leave. What you need to do is, you have to go to your partition software. Okay, so make it run. Load, load the uh, file, which is into our desktop. So batch number R is, is two to four. So from here, select all files, key pair, pen file open. Okay. And save the private key. Are you sure you want to save this without, without a passphrase to protect it? So you need to say yes. So the PPK, save the type as PPK. So Linux batch two to four. So by default, it will save it as into extension of PPK because the PPK file is generated. So yes. What we did, we first we created our instance, and after that we created a key pair, which are the credentials for us to get logged into our cloud uh, EC2 machine. And now we create generated that PEM file from PEM file to PPK file. Next comes the putty. So what is the putty? So you need to again go to the same browser to the putty gen and just come back over here. And from here only you need to download putty. So here is putty.exe. Who are having a Windows host, just click over here. Hello. So I downloaded the putty. I clicked on it to make it run. And once you run it, you'll get the putty configuration. Putty is not nothing but it from where we will get connected to the EC2 from our host machine. Okay. So let's come back to the AWS. So just select our EC2, which we have newly created. Here you will get the public IP address. Just copy it. Go to Putty, paste over here. In the left-hand side, you need to go to SSH. Into connections, you will get SSH. Once you come to SSH, go to auth, auth and after that credentials you have to. So what are the R credentials? Our credentials are the PPK file. So just browse from here, go to your desktop. We, you have created one folder where you have kept your PPK file. So open. <coughs> so once you click open, accept. So yes, you have got your login as EC2 hyphen user. So you have to keep it as EC2 hyphen user only because in EC2 instance, you cannot log in with the root. So authenticating, so see, 
successfully we have created our EC2 machine, which is of Linux operating system. Here also I'll create to I'll try to create one new file, file one, file two. I'll try to create the directory, dir1, dir2. So I'll put ls hyphen. So see, so we have successfully created our AWS EC2 instance, Linux instance onto our cloud platform. Okay, so we started using it. So I can fire the command as PWD, PWD or who am I? Who am I? I am an EC2 user. So this is the second method for your Linux installation. So until here, do you have any query? You can ask me on the chat box or you can raise your hands, okay? So in this way, we have launched our EC2 instance. So the third thing from where, uh, so let me close my EC2, close this session. So see, whenever you need to practice your Linux operating system commands, and if you are using AWS, just remember one thing that when you come to this uh, panel, just after once your practicing is completed, click on this and come to instance state. You need to stop the instance, means you need to stop your instance. Okay. And when you want, and when you perform this practical and you think that I should not get uh, my practice is done on AWS. Just ter after you complete this uh, practical, just terminate the instance. Terminate means wholly it will delete your EC2 machine. Okay, so there uh, there will not be. And if if you only stop from here again, you can start your instance from the same end. Select your instance and start your instance. Okay. So this was all about how to launch an instance and how we can stop it, start it, and terminate it. So I have terminated my EC2 because I'll not be practicing anymore on this. So this was the practical which we have shown, I have shown to you. So let's move with the next third thing that is the online practicing of the commands. So let's move to the ballard.org, just type into the browser, ballard.org Linux. Okay, so five price Ballard you will get. So click on it. So see, JS Linux. So here you need to select Fedora 33 Linux, console, not X Windows. You have to select console and click here. Why Fedora? Because Fedora is similar with the Linux. All base operating systems are same only. Okay. So it is getting loaded. So see, the same it is getting root at the rate local host, right? So let me make it as Create some files over here. Touch file one, file two, file three. Let me create some of the directories. DIR one, DIR two, DIR three. MKDIR, not MKMDIR, it's MKDIR. So ls hyphen l to list whatever we have created. So see, here we didn't install our operating system. Directly we came to ballard.org, we selected the Fedora into the console mode. And here I created the file also and directory also. And uh, all the commands I'm filing just for the practicing of my commands. This is not safe also because everyone
are accessing this panel globally. Okay, regard by PWD and who am I? That it is a root only, but n number of people are accessing it for the practicing purpose. So this is the third method, method which we have seen. So we have successfully completed all three of the practicals, one on the VM, second on the EC2, and that is the cloud platform, and third is the online platform. Right, so on all three, we created new files and directories and also listed these files. So yes, these were all, all about the installation guide. So let me log out, sign out. So today let's move with the basics of our commands. So <clears throat> so yes, we have now entered the real operating system. Since really we'll be starting with the commands today. Ha, huh. Fedora, yes, all these are the distributions of Linux. Okay, Mariama, if these are the Linux distributions, you can practice on that bellard.org with selecting Fedora also. The basic commands will all be same. Okay, and better way you go with your virtual uh, machine. If you have a Mac OS, then you can download with the Mac uh availabilities for the virtual machine and whoever has has the windows host they can select with the windows it will be better if you'll go with the vms okay so is it clear to you okay thank you so let's move with our basic commands today so what are basic commands Basic commands are nothing but C. Remember the sentence that everything in Linux is a file, right? Everything works into a file. So the first thing we are going to learn is to create, to list, and to delete the files and the directories, okay? So the first command is, to check the present working directory. Okay, so this is our single user operating system right now. So right now, this is our single user operating system. But whenever you are working into your uh, organization or in you are accessing any of the server, there is a need to check into which directory you are working. So for that, the command is PWD, means present working directory. So enter. So see where I am, my directory is forward slash. Forward slash is the main directory. It will come to know into your file system structure, which is our next topic, okay? So we are into the root directory. So ls, let ls, ls is nothing but to show the content of the directory. Means what all contents are available in those directory. So see ls when i listed the files and the directories from the uh, root directory it showed that anaconda hyphen ks dot cfg dir2 and file name okay so the third command to see more detail including the permissions okay ls hyphen l so what does what is the difference between ls and ls hyphen l so see what ls did it, it listed what all contents are there into the root directory. But ls hyphen l, what it did, it showed the files and the directories with its permissions. Okay, each and every file and directory are set with the default permissions into our Linux operating system. Okay, so root, root is the user who created this file and the group. The second part is a group. You will come to know these things into user and group management and also into the file structure. 
structure. What are uh, files, how they are stored into a structure format. Just remember this command. What is the output of this command is listing the files and the directories with its permissions and the users and the groups. Okay, next command. To see all contents, including the hidden files. So ls hyphen a, what is a option do? It will also show you some of the hidden files into the root directory. So see, only firing the command hyphen l, it only showed three files. Anaconda KS, DIR2, and file one. But when I fired the command ls hyphen a, it also showed the files with the dot, starting with dot, which are the hidden files, including Anaconda KS, DIR2, and file one. Right. To see the tree structure of the nested directory. Okay. Means one after other. If suppose I create, to create a directory, there is a command mkdir. Make a directory. Okay. mkdir. So let me name it as dir1. Okay. To switch to this directory means I need to enter to this particular directory. I need to fire the command cd to direct to that directory one. So see where am I pwd, which is my present working directory. I came to root. First I was into root directory. Then I created a new directory and I fired the command cd dir dir1 and I switched to dir1 directory. So present working directory of mine is dir1. Okay. So why I'm showing you this? Because to see the tree structure of the nested directory, we need now. So again, we can create a dir, okay, dir2. Okay, so let me come back. And again, by the command ls hyphen capital R and to whose structure I want to see to see of dir1. So see in dir1 there is dir2 directory and it has also showed into this format also. So this is the output of ls hyphen capital R and the name of the directory which we need to see the structured format. Okay, so this is a fresh OS. So what we will be, we'll be having less files and directories, but which is already working operating system or working server that time. And if you need to check the tree structure of directory, means directory into directories are there, directory into files are there. Again, a number of directories are there incubated into that particular main parent directory. So to see the tree structure, ls hyphen r is the command. So let's move to the next slide. Is it the screen is correctly viewable to you people, right? The I'm I have opened it parallelly to you people. Yes. Can you explain the command ls hyphen r? So yes, so see, <clears throat> ls hyphen hyphen help. So see, remember, help is one command which will let you know all the options related to ls. ls is a command, right? So ls hyphen hyphen l. So see. what it has given over here. So let me hyphen hyphen L less command. I'll use the command over here. I'll let you know what is less. Afterwards, we'll, we are having that practical source of the less command. So R is nothing, but it shows us the tree structure of the nested directories. Okay, Jean, it shows the nested directory information into the tree structure in spite of into the uh, vertical format it is showing it will show us show us into the tree structure means dir1 is in dir2 again under that subdirectory is dir 
Yes, Jean. Yeah, um, I was asking the question because on your on your screen, if you can share down your server, the, the Linux uh, Red Hat server, that you were, you were practicing commands in it. I saw the, um, the command that you typed, you, it was ls uh, slash iPhone R, and then you put uh, dear one. So I wanted to know if that is like a specific command or, yeah, it was capital. Yeah. It's not one, it's L hyphen L. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's not one. See here, R, why I used R, see. To least, see hyphen R is recursive. Recursive means one after another, right? Mm -hmm. Least okay. subdirectories recursively means I gave that command that I need this particular directory to be shown into the recursive tree structured format. Okay. So okay. what it will do is it will display all the sub directories one after other, which are residing under the parent directory. Got your point. And regarding okay. hyphen L. So see, it is L not one. Okay. Uh -huh. And here all the options they have given. So see, what is ls? It is used ls and the option and the file names. It lists the information about the files, okay, into the current directory. So these are all options available we can use with the ls command, okay. Each description is also given over here. So whenever you uh, need more options you can use these options also and we are also going to cover many options in our practicals okay so did you got clear with this gene yeah clear mm -hmm. okay good so let me clear any of the command you take if you take uh, touch i made the um, touch command fired onto all three platforms so if I'll make with touch hyphen hyphen L and less, less is nothing but it is used to read the file one after another, one page after another, because we have large files, okay, which will not be displayed wholly on the terminal. So we use less command. So see touch, for touch also we are having these many options. If we use hyphen A, change only the access time. If we use hyphen C, do not create any files. So like this, uh, we can use many options. Step by step, you will come to know, okay? So once you will be into operating system, you will come to know all these things. So next is we saw recursive, that is hyphen R. To see the file whose length is of character three, three characters. If suppose there are a number of files into this particular directory, Okay, and I want only three character uh, file name. So for that, you can fire the command ls with the three question marks. Star is there. Okay, so which are the files with the files and the directory with the name of three and more it is showing. So dir1 is there, dir2 is there, and dir2 is there. It is viewing the files. So next, to see the file that starts with single character and ends with the, ends up with any number of the character. If suppose you don't know any file's name fully, and you only know that it starts with an, a single character and ends with a number of that character, number of that character. So for that, the command is, so this is a bit complicated. We'll take it in the last so that you'll come to know, okay? Just understand the ls command up to the tree structure format. These question marks and all, I'll show you afterwards. Let us create a new file, okay? So to create a new file, there is a touch command also, touch. Touch is the command where you can create an empty file. Okay, so let me create file two. And to create multiple empty files, 
you can use it touch command with the file name you need to create including the second file name by giving a single space in between them okay so i created three files over there file 3 file 4 file 5 at a time by using touch command and these all are empty files so let let me list these files okay to list a file there is a command l s l list with its permissions so you can also do ls also both will output the same listing with permission and without permission okay so see we successfully created the empty files with a touch command that is file 2 file 3 file 4 and file 5 even file 1 is created with the touch command only prior when i started with my operating system so next what is cat cat is nothing but it is also the command to create a file with including some content to that file okay so let me fire the command cat append okay single greater than signs meant to append file demo so see here we'll get some uh we can include our some of the lines over here hello good morning good morning to all so welcome to logic labs technologies r at c s a batch okay so control c we have switched out of it now what i did i created a new file with the cat command with the append option in it so that i can add the content at the uh, at that time only to that particular file. Now, I need to view or I need to print the content of this particular file. So, what is the command for that? The command is cat file demo. Means the name of the file whose content should be printed. That name. Okay. So, see cat and the file name demo which we newly created. So, see it has display or you can say it has printed its contents contents in the file contents into the file so uh, did you got the cat command how we use the cat command Okay, so let me see what all cat commands are there. Yes, this cat to append signs means to greater than signs file name. I'll show you later. Once we'll complete with all the directories and all. Uh, yes, Mariam, you have any query related to the cat? I have unmuted you. You can talk. Yeah. Uh, so what to create to create the file with the cut command so you do the cut command and then that um that sign over there and then file demo because to view the 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 file you do cut and then file name but i didn't get how you created with the um with the hello good morning Huh. Could you explain a little bit about that? Ah, yes. I'll explain you one more time. See, huh. cat is the command. Okay. What is cat? It is a command which helps us to create a new file. Okay. With the help of the greater than sign. Means that is to append. Append some of the content to the new file, which I'll be mentioning the new file over. Okay. So cat append means to add a content to it. 
file name, whatever the file name is, it might be file test. I have given one name for that file. File. Okay, what name I have given? File test. And I made enter. And what I want to include that particular file, whatever it might be. Hello, good night, uh, good morning. Okay, so I included this content into that file. After that, I want to get exited from that, this writing mode. Okay, I have written something. So for that, I pressed Control C. I exited from that. And now I want to print. Means I want to see that what I have written to that file. Or henceforth, after two, three days also, you want to see that what I had written into file, I don't remember. And I want to print it. I want to view it. In Windows, how you do is just go, go to it. You just click to that particular uh, file and you open it and you can read the whatever uh, content we have written. But in Linux, we need to use commands to print the file content. Means to file me uh, whatever we have written, I want to read it. How we will read? So the command is cat and the name of the file to which I want to read. So see, cat and the name of the file to view its content. So what was written in it? It was written that, hello, good night, and good morning. I pressed control C here only, so it didn't took that particular line. So is it clear, Mariam? Yes, thank Don't you. Don't get confused. OK, step by step, try to understand these basic commands. OK, slowly, slowly, how we will practice, it will be very much user friendly to you people. Just Try to keep keep in mind the concept. Ha, the concept of cat is to create a new file with adding a content to it by using the append sign. And to print the content of that file, we need to only fire the command cat and the name of the file. Okay. So have, how we'll move for, forward, it will become easier for you to know, know the cat command. Because... Each and every day, whenever we'll be working into an, a Linux operating system, cat is a must we should use. Okay. Okay. Cat thank command. you. Ha, to read any of the configuration files, we use the cat command domain. If we use without append sign, like cat file name is going to create an empty file. No, 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 no. Cat will print the content of the file. And it will not create the file without append inside. To create an empty file, you need to use the touch command. Kaukuntla Madhusagar. Right. I'll unmute you. Wait. To create an empty file, we need to use touch command. And if we want to print the file content, we should use the cat and the name of the file. Uh, did you got cleared with Kaukuntla? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Don't get confused, everyone, because it will be a bit difficult because you are not command line uh, prior you had practiced, right? So step by step, how we'll move forward, you will. it will become easier for you. Cat is important. Touch is important. All basic commands, which all are important, I have included into the PDF so that you should get familiar with this and how we'll move to the next chapters. It will become user-friendly to you people. Okay. So it's already 8.59 uh, 59 a.m. now. So it's almost 9 a.m. So I would like to end up our session here. And... Uh, I will clear more of your doubts if you have on Monday. Okay, because today it's already Friday. And Monday we will be continuing with the same basic commands. Once we'll complete with the basic commands, we'll be covering what are file systems. And after that, we are going to move with the VI editor. Okay, so these file system structures I am going to explain you. Okay, this structure, how the files are stored into the operating system. 
then we'll be moving to the rest of the parts okay then so this, this was all about the day 3 session and also with the basics of the command